As you may know or have guessed by now, there is more than one way to analyze an electric circuit. We are going to look at one now that is a very powerful but a very simple method of analyzing a, an electric circuit. It uses Ohm's law, Kirchhoff's voltage law, and the superposition uh, theorem all at once to convert what is an electrical circuit to a mathematical equation that if you follow simple rules, you come to the actual answer. I'm going to go through the theory first uh, very quickly and then I'll analyze some circuits so you'll get a feel for this mesh current or loop analysis. Mesh current uh, or loop analysis, it, by virtue of its name, analyzes a circuit that looks essentially like a mesh. And a mesh has several loops in it. In this case, this particular example has three loops in it. And we're going to call them loop number one, loop number two, and loop number three. It goes without saying that there is going to be current flowing in this circuit because of the voltage supplies or the batteries that are on the left hand side of the uh, loops. And if we consider current flowing in each of the loops, I'm going to make an assumption right now that the current flowing in loop one looks like this, the current flowing in loop two looks like this, and the current flowing in loop three looks like this. Now the beauty of doing mesh current or loop analysis is once we've made the assumption of currents flowing in the direction the currents are flowing in, we very quickly come to a set of mathematical equations which we can analyze and come up with the values for the currents. As I said, the beauty of this is if we assume the currents are flowing in the wrong direction, then the answer we get for those currents will come out negative and we'll see that through the mathematical analysis. So I'm going to assume my current is flowing in a clockwise direction in each one of the loops. And it, you can make the assumption that they're flowing in other directions or opposing directions if you want. It doesn't matter because the mathematics will look after it. For now, I'm assuming uh, I1 is flowing clockwise and I2 is flowing clockwise and I3 is flowing clockwise. The part that is the superposition theorem is that we can analyze each one of the currents independently of the other. That's what the superposition theorem tells us. So we will look at each one of the currents independently and then do our analysis. If current flowing in I1 looks like that, then we're going to get a voltage drop across the bottom resistor there, as I've indicated, plus to minus. And the resistor in the top of the three meshes, because of the current I2 flowing in that direction, will set up a voltage drop from positive to negative as indicated in the diagram. And in loop three, the outermost resistor, because of the current I3, will have a voltage drop as indicated plus to minus in the diagram. Now, looking at the common resistors, the common resistor between I1 and I2 the current flowing in that resistor will be I1 minus I2 because I2 is flowing in the opposite direction of I1. And again, it doesn't matter whether I1 is greater than or less than I2 because if it turns out that I1 is smaller than I2, then our answer will come up such that I1 minus I2 is negative and I'll know the direction is wrong. But for now, because we're assuming I1 flowing clockwise and I2 is flowing clockwise, the direction of the current I1 minus I2 is left to right. 
and the current flowing in the common resistor between I2 and I3 is similarly I2 minus I3. And the, re, the current flowing in the common resistor between I1 and I3 is going to be I1 minus I3. Once we have assumed the loop currents, I1, I2, and I3, we then write the Kirchhoff's voltage law equations for each of the loops. Now remember, Kirchhoff's voltage law states that the voltage drops around a circuit must add to zero. So we will go around each loop using the assumed current flows of I1, I2, and I3, and write down the voltage drops for that particular circuit using that particular current. Remember now, we're going to analyze each current independently and then add them together. Uh, that is what the superposition theorem dictates. So, the rules for voltage drops are the voltage drops are positive and across each resistor and are given by Ohm's law. So, the voltage drops on the outermost resistors will have a positive to negative voltage drops as indicated because the currents flowing through them are in the direction as indicated in our diagram. When we come to the power supplies, which are voltage supplies, the voltage will be rising, and voltage rises are negative and are equal to the voltage source ratings. In other words, if they're 1.5 volts, they will be 1.5 volt voltage rise. If they are 9 volts, it'll be 9 volt voltage rise or 12 volts or whatever the battery voltage is. If the batteries are in the reverse direction to the current, such as that, the voltage is no longer a voltage rise, but it will be a voltage drop from positive to negative. And therefore, the voltage drop will be positive. However, in our case, the battery is in that direction, so it will be considered a voltage rise, and it will be negative. Now, the voltage drops across the common resistors, that is, the resistors with two currents flowing in them, are also given by Ohm's law, V equals I times R, and are positive. The polarity is according to the loop current being followed. In other words, if we're following I1, the polarity will be positive to negative left to right. If we're following I2, the common resistor will have voltage drop positive to negative right to left. The current in the Ohm's law equation is the arithmetic sum of the two currents flowing through it. The loop current being followed is positive. The other current is positive or negative depending on its direction of flow with respect to the loop current being followed. Now that's a mouthful. What that means in our diagram is that you will see that in the common resistor between I1 and I2, that I2 opposes I1 because they're both flowing in each of the respective loops in a clockwise direction. So I2 flows in the opposite direction of I1 in the common resistor. If one or the other current was flowing in the other direction, then 
it would be positive, not negative. Let's have a closer look at that in our example. And we can see that if we are following current I1 in the current loop, the resistor in the bottom of that loop uh, is pretty simple. We see that the current flowing through it will set up a, a uh, positive voltage drop from right to left. The voltage drop across the common resistor is also going to be positive to negative because we are following I1 and it is also going to be given by Ohm's law. However, the current in our Ohm's law is going to be made up of I1, which is positive, and because the current, the other current flowing in that resistor is due to I2, I2 is flowing in the opposite direction to I1, so that the current is given by I1 minus I2. Now remember, we have arbitrarily assumed that the current flowing in the direction in each of those two loops are clockwise. If, when we're finished doing our analysis, we have chosen the wrong direction for the current, the current values will be negative, and we'll show you that in an example. However, in the logic that we're setting out here, the current flowing in the common resistor between I1 and I2, because we are following the current in I1, the current in the common resistor will be I1 minus I2, and the voltage drop is considered positive. So, the last sentence in that paragraph, the loop current being followed is positive, the other current is positive or negative depending on the direction of its flow. If I2 was flowing in the other direction, it would be positive because the current flowing in the common resistor would be made up of I1 plus I2, but they're flowing in opposite directions, so it's going to be I1 minus I2. Stay tuned for the next video and we will run through a practical example using real resistance values and real voltage values for the power sources. Stay tuned to this site as I will be diving into more information on electrical installations. In the meantime, take advantage of the availability of my 50-page electrical power crib sheets if you haven't already downloading them. Simply fill out the information requested when you go to this website. https colon forward slash forward slash lowercase bit dot ly forward slash four seven uppercase y uppercase b three lowercase v and lastly lowercase h. As I said, stay tuned for future releases on this site that will provide you with more on my courses. You can also directly access my stand store courses at this website. https colon forward slash forward slash lowercase stan dot store forward slash uppercase g uppercase v uppercase b.